This is a very exciting reading diaries because I'm gonna start off at home when Crescent City 3 released and then the latter half of this vlog is in Montana in the dreamiest, coziest cabin reading spot I've ever seen in my entire life. But let's start back at home. The bookstore opened 40 minutes ago and I am running there. Not literally, I'm in my car. But I'm scared that it's already sold out. I don't know how it's gonna work today. Is it already sold out or do they have plenty of copies? I don't know. I've been laying in this bed trying to get to page 200 and I just cannot stop checking my phone or just reading this book so slowly. I have no idea why because it's pretty interesting. Like the point of views are constantly shifting and everything's kind of exploding right now, but still I just cannot focus. Oh, I did make it to page 200. Chapter 20, page 204. Okay, that's good. Also, this hardcover is the most satisfying thing because I love how big the text is and it's actually like not hard to open like I thought it would be. It's kind of fun. I think it's the biggest hardcover I've ever read in my entire life. Anyways, I'm gonna try to keep reading. It's like a week later. I am randomly going to be done with this book because I paused this video to go and make reading an Apple Vision Pro for 24 hours and I was exactly halfway through this book. It was just a great opportunity to finish this book because it's so long and I was just losing hope that I would finish it in a normal amount of time. I thought it would take me like a month. It took me six days to read, but that included the 24 hour reading challenge. And I just feel like my head is so empty of thoughts for it. I don't know how to give a review. I think something that I've realized is that I like the single point of view that we get in her Akatar series and this one switches POVs so fast multiple times in a chapter and it doesn't even give you a header of like whose point of view we're in so I feel like it takes my brain extra work to read the names of the characters and be like okay this is the point of view we're in this is the storyline we're following because all the characters are in different places and because the world building is already so difficult to understand in these books I feel like that just adds to me having to make sure my brain is like super awake while reading and if I get lazy I definitely just miss things I really liked the setting for a lot of the book I liked the like caves and underground adventure that they were going Going on. There's a female character in here who I really liked her story arc. The characters that are introduced at the very end of the second book, I wished we got to see more of them in this one. I was kind of expecting them to be like super involved and like we definitely see them, but it was just a little hint, which is fine. I don't know what she has up her sleeve for those characters, but yeah, I think I kind of was just expecting more of them in it. So maybe that's why I was a little disappointed. I also found myself not really caring about Hunt and Bryce and like their romance story. I just was like, you guys are being annoying to each other. And then when they were not being annoying to each other, I was skipping the pages. <laughs> so I just didn't really feel connected to them. But yeah, I feel like this is like a four star read for me, which feels crazy to say because these books have so much hype. But I mean, I obviously have an amazing time with her books and now I've read every single one of her books, which is so crazy. But what I'm really looking forward to is her next Akatar book. That is gonna be a great day. So I made room for her on my shelf and I've officially read all of her books. I also read Ali Hazelwood's new book in the Apple Vision Pro video. And I just kind of casually revealed that I'm launching bookmarks and book sleeves. I've been working on them for so long that I just finally was like, I just need to show you guys. And even though it's not out yet, it could be by the time this video is posted, you can check HaleyFam.com to see. But I just need to show you guys. I'm so proud of them and I'm so excited to see, oh my gosh. I actually have not thought about the fact that I will get to see this bookmark in y'all's books, in y'all's book sleeves. Oh gosh, that just gave me that I'm really excited for. This is the bookmark. It's a floral design. It says book girlies book club. If you're a boy, join the book girlies anyway, okay? And then the back, I wanted to make it something where you could like actually track the books that you're reading so you can write down the book name and then your rating for it. Especially if you're someone who reads like a lot of books per month, I feel like it's so nice to just visually see the ones that you've already read and it could be motivating to like fill it out more. Or if you just read a few books a year, you can like do your yearly TBR on it and then fill in the rating as you read them. I don't know. And then it has a tassel, which you could remove if you wanted to. And it's like a vinyl material because I didn't like how paper ones just kind of rip easily and this one's like more sturdy So yeah, you can check the description to see if they're out yet. Ryan just got home So I got distracted, but this is the book sleeve It has the same floral print and then it has the pink on the inside from the flowers And then it has a button and a little elastic strap. So these match you can get it in a bundle set We're not gonna make that many bundle sets But there will be some and we played with the size of this one a lot because I wanted you to fit like obviously a normal Standard paperback size, but also if you got like a new hardcover book that size fits in there as well. And then I was like, what if you read massive Sarah J Mass books or fantasy books and you should be able to fit that one in there too. This is probably the biggest book I could get. 
and then you could still put the elastic over. And I just found myself like actually wanting some sort of case to put my books in because if I go to a coffee shop or someone's house, I just throw it into my backpack and then the edges get so frayed from other stuff hitting it. And then you can also put like your pens, your annotation supplies, your Kindle or your iPad in here. You can just put multiple things. So it's just kind of like a nice case to put in like your tote bag. But I'm just so excited because for merch, I've done like hoodies and shirts and stuff in the past, but I've never like created an actual product that I would use in my daily life, especially for reading. So this is just like the most exciting thing launch wise that I feel like I've ever done. And I just love like the little spring vibes that this one has. So I'll link it in the description. You'll be able to tell pretty quickly if it's out yet or not. But now I'm gonna go to the bookstore because there are two books that I just need to have. <laughs> no one needs it, but I need it. Good morning, I'm back at Barnes and Noble. Can you tell that I just woke up? It is 10 a.m., but I fell asleep at like 3.30 a.m. cause Ryan was up all night editing a video and I guess I lost track of time. I don't know. <laughs> I was reading If Only I Had Told Her by Laura Nowlin in the Apple Vision Pro for the main channel video I just posted and I don't have a physical copy of it so I want to go buy that. I just put my phone down because there was a stranger walking past but I'm like 70% through it. I was reading it on my phone until I fell asleep and I need the physical copy. There are some other books on my mind but I just really don't need to buy new books so we'll see if that happens or not. If I just so stumble across them too easily then maybe it's meant to be but if not won't be searching them out. I'm back. I love when I buy books and they just look amazing together. And they're the same size, which I feel like never happens. I acquired, if only I had told her. The Barnes & Noble edition is actually great and beautiful because the other one is like a white color and this one is so pretty. And I love matte covers. I feel like I've said that one million times. In my head, I was like, if I go to the fantasy section and find the book quickly, then that means it's meant to be and I'm allowed to buy it, so. I found it quickly, which is crazy because it wasn't even facing out. It was facing like this and I saw it immediately. This is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. I've been intrigued by this cover since the first time that I'd seen it. And the fact that it's called historical fantasy is kind of why I put it off, which doesn't make that much sense because I have enjoyed historical fiction in the past. But then it made it to Katie is reading favorite books of the year video. And I love her book taste. And it's just like a short fantasy book. I think there's three in the series. And I just feel like this is a genre that I love. And I just don't read more books in it. Ooh, Cursed by a Fairy. See, it has fairies. It's gonna be whimsical. I need to read books that are more like the Cruel Prince trilogy because it's one of my favorite series ever. So I'm glad I finally have this because I think I will read this like pretty immediately. I just changed shirts, but the jeans that you just saw me wearing in the last clip are from Thread Up because they're sponsoring this video and I've been working with them for years now. So actually so much of my wardrobe is from them, but if you don't know what they are, they're like an online thrift store so you can get clothes secondhand. It's more affordable. It's good for the environment. You can organize it by your size, which is so convenient. You can't do that in an actual store. And I got a few pieces because I'm going to Montana on a ski trip and I've skied one time because I'm from Texas. I don't do that. So I needed some winter gear. This is probably making me look so short, but I just first have to show these jeans because I have like two pairs of jeans that actually fit and I got these from Thread Up, and they're Levi's and they're so cute and they fit perfectly and they were only $30 and 99 cents. And if you buy Levi's full price, it's like $98. So that's my first thing. You should look up some Levi's on there. This is so cute. Are you joking? I got this Zara a jacket. This is adorable. And I only paid $42.99 for this jacket. And the original price is like $78. Another thing I never have, especially in the summertime, but like in general is a pair of sunglasses. So I looked up what they have and they had crap eyewear, which is such a nice brand. And I got these ones and I'm so happy that they look so good. I'm actually like, these are just the perfect everyday sunglass. Sunglass? Yeah, sunglass. I also got a fun little leather jacket. This with the sunglasses is quite the combo. This is a free people top that I've gotten from a previous order, but you guys probably have seen me wear this a million times. And then I also got this cute little tote bag because I just need like a little book bag or, oh, there's like a little clasp in here. That's so nice. To go to the park or the coffee shop or various things. So I also favorited like 50 items of things on the website that I would personally be interested in buying. And they're also giving y'all a code for an extra 35% off your first order, which is crazy because the stuff is already so well priced. So you can use code Haley P and check out my favorites. All the links will be in the description. And thank you Thread Up for sponsoring this video. I finished this book. It's the sequel to to if he had been with me. I gave this one five stars. This one feels like a kind of a big epilogue, I guess, except for the front half because you get another character's point of view of one of the last scenes in this book. So that was super fun. So like half of this book was amazing. And then when it gets into other characters' POVs, it just felt like a very big repetitive epilogue a little bit. I still enjoyed it because I just love these characters. I forgot how much I missed Finn and Autumn and Jack and even Sylvie and all of these characters in this world. But I even feel like her writing wasn't as 
because I don't know it just felt like she kind of ran out of lines that she really wanted to say because in this book there were so many things that I felt like I needed to underline so I think I would give this like a three and a half stars I still really enjoyed it I would have been way too curious to not ever read it so this is completed I would highly recommend the first book still it's young adult contemporary there's a tragedy it's like coming of age romance it's so good and the writing is so simple but beautiful it's so cute then I picked up a few different books and couldn't get past 40 pages so I finally picked up wildfire by Hannah Grace this is one of the books that I put like facing out on my romance shelf so I would always stare at this cover because I just think her covers are so cute and I finally was like I'm just gonna read the first chapter or two and I've done that for the past two nights and I'm on page 54 now and I actually really enjoy it so I'm gonna start reading this I'm probably not gonna finish it today which means I have to bring it to Montana and this is not necessarily actually they do go to like a camp in this book and I'm going to a cabin-esque type house so maybe the vibes are similar I'm gonna pick up where I left off on this Suddenly, the world I used to know From a dream, now here's reality Baby, baby, you are really hurting me Cause every time you tell me I'm good and bad I'm doing fine But nothing ever changes And now I see Baby, you are hurting me We made it to Whitefish, Montana. We came to Whitefish because Montana's been on my bucket list for like four years now. One of our friends has skied here before and then Ryan found a Wander House that's here and he's worked with that brand before so they were willing to give it to him in exchange for like a YouTube short. So we got this insane place, which is crazy and not what we were expecting. We're all just gonna like rent something with our friends and split it, um, but this is the craziest place I've ever been in in my entire life. We're gonna do a little bit of skiing and I'm gonna do a lot of bit of reading. It's gonna be the coziest cabin reading vlog ever. I'm so excited. Stop like, it had been like three months. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the van of the hour. Witty! <laughs> Hey, thanks. today is read my books. I didn't even mean to, but these are both perfectly themed for this place because this one takes place at a camp and this one takes place in a town that loves ice hockey. Similar vibe. And I got to page 145 of Wildfire. She's a sweet, fun, happy time. And I got to page 20 of Beartown. A little bit slower moving, meeting all the characters and there are a lot of them, but both are perfect. What a fun day. <laughs> really fun. It's the second time I've ever been, but I am home now and I'm very, very, very excited to get back to reading. I'm now 250 pages into Wildfire. This is the same author who wrote Icebreaker, which was one of the most viral TikTok hockey romance books ever. It's like top 
10 in the charts on like Amazon, Kindle, everything. And I have not read that one, but I heard that this one is a little different than her previous book in like spice level. So I wanted to give this one a try because it's also a cabin camp counselor vibe. And I just feel like that was perfect for this trip. It's also dual POV. So we get Aurora, who is this girl in college. Her dad is like this very wealthy man who owns this F1 race driving car company thing. And he values his work and his other family over her. So she feels very unwanted and she's kind of searching for validation in other people. And then we have Russ, who is this kind of shyer guy. And he also has some issues from his father that he doesn't like to tell anyone about because he's very private, but Aurora is an overshare. So it's a very fun dynamic between the two of them. They meet at a party in college and then they both go to this camp to be counselors and they don't realize that the other person was gonna be there. So they're stuck together, but they're not allowed to date. They're not allowed to do anything. And that's where we're at. So we'll see how this book wraps itself up because we're kind of at the point already where they definitely know that they like each other, but they're still at this camp where they're not supposed to be dating. So we'll see what happens. Made myself another coffee. finished it. I think I'm gonna give it like a 2.75, which sounds mean, but I didn't hate it. I really liked the characters' backstories. I just feel like when they were kind of supposed to be healing from it, the lines didn't really hit me. They just felt kind of cheesy, and I didn't really have any moments where I was like feeling emotions that you would normally feel in a romance book. So vibes were fun, but it kind of just made me crave reading a good romance book or one that I personally would find really good. So I'm glad I got it out of the way though, because I would have been curious about it for the rest of time if I just seen it on my shelf a million times so i'm happy that i read it it's time to go home now after that dream cabin trip literally a pinterest board come to life it was just magical also don't forget you can use code hayley p to get an extra 35 percent off your first thread up order link will be in the description for that thanks for sponsoring this video thread up love you guys